Back back. <laughs> yes, we are in the Four Wheel RC Aquatic Facility. And yes, we are about to get the SX10 wet. If you've been watching my earlier build videos, you would have seen that I'm building an Axial SCX10 Jeep Rubicon 2012. And uh, I've just finished doing the wiring. I think it's waterproof. I don't know, so we're going to find out. Um, this is not uh, an edited video. This is literally the first time I've tried this. So we are going to see what's going to happen. So I'm not going to mess around. Let's just turn on the transmitter. Get this thing plugged in. So I'm running this with both batteries. This is the parallel battery setup. So there we are. There is the F610 in the bar. There's the steering. That's running, and you'll see the uh, the light circuits are working at the moment. There's the lights. So let's start the tap. Now I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear me with the sound of the water, but uh, I'm going to time this and uh, as soon as the truck is underwater we'll start timing and uh, then we'll see how it copes. Right, so the water is approaching the tyres now. Uh, the tyres uh, just have the foams in, there's no weights in the tyres, so I don't know if this truck will float or if it will stay on the bottom, we'll find out. Right, so we've got water up to the axles now. Well, that's some initial splashes over the electrics and there's nothing going wrong so far. Uh, lights are still functioning. Right, we've got water coming up over the motor now. So I'm going to start a timer on this. Let's hope that doesn't fall in. Right, the water's over the wheels now. And the motor is fully submerged. Steering's still working. Got some jittering in reverse. Now something weird's going on there in reverse. Let's smooth it out. Now the brushless motor is absolutely not happy. You hear that? I think there's something wrong with the sensors. No, going forward is not good. Steering. Steering's working fine. No, the motor is not happy going forward. We've got some error lights there on the ESC. That's saying a, a sensor error. I said that was a fail. It's not underwater resistant at all. Um, the overall electrics are working okay, but the motor's failed. I guess we've got some kind of water entering the motor. So I have some more waterproofing to do. So there you go, that's the results of the water test. Uh, three minutes in, we failed very quickly. Uh, here we are back in the workshop after the uh, aborted water test. It's about 15 minutes since we dunked the SCX10. As you can see, the, uh, the lighting controllers are working fine. Uh, let's check out the winch, see how that's doing. Yeah, winch and winch controller still fine. Servo, 
lighting etc so the only thing that really seemed to take a knock with the water was the motor itself the um, the ESC is on and functioning but it seems to be the sensors this is a sensor brushless motor um, they're just not happy if I try to go forward slowly it's not happy and I've now got a, a sensor error code on the ESC right motors out uh, you can see where I've put plaster dip um, on all of the power connectors and the sensor wire and the allen bolts on the sides of the motor um, but I didn't plaster it the join of the case itself I was assuming that would be reasonably waterproof and I plastered it to all the screw holes that aren't being used but I guess it needs a lot more I'm going to take this apart and have a look inside well it's pretty obvious this motor needs some more waterproofing I don't know if you can see the puddle of water down here but uh, just as I'm taking these long bolts off uh, a big load of water has just dripped out so uh, water's obviously getting in somehow let's see what happens when we take this last bolt out the other thing I've noticed is that the um, Allen bolts for this are not metric. I guess Novak is a, a proud American company and uh, looks like some kind of imperial size uh, Allen bolts. Luckily I've got uh, an Allen key that fits. So here comes the last one. Alright, there's the can. Absolutely soaking wet in there. Uh, I think I know where the water's got in. Um, these allen bolts here, uh, there's just nothing to seal them up. <laughs> so I think the water's just come come straight through, straight through here, obviously. Uh, next time I need to seal those up and we'll investigate further in the motor to see any other places where water could have got in. Right, so I'm just working on the sensor end of the motor. I've taken out the three allen bolts and uh, gently with a spanner I can get onto the two flat sides here and start to undo this. Obviously the plaster dip is binding up at the moment. The good thing about plaster dip is with some careful trimming with a, a scalpel just to give it a line where it's going to split on and then just careful pulling uh, you just peel it off. So there's the plaster dip coming off nicely and obviously we're going to have to recoat that when we fix the problem. Not sure how well you're going to be able to see this but uh, I've got the cover off now and uh, Although this has got a rubber seal on it, uh, there's, there's signs of dampness inside on the back bearing. And uh, I don't think that's come through, um, that's not come through this side of the motor, it's come through through where the um, main shaft goes and it's leaked out through. And there's some um, fine electronics here, there's a circuit board. And then inside we've got uh, some components actually, I think this... I think this board comes out. Right, a couple of hours later, I've had the uh, Novak ballistic motor uh, completely in bits, um, dabbed off the excess moisture with some kitchen roll, and then I've just left it in a warm room. And uh, it's working again. Hooray, thank goodness I haven't ruined it. I think the problem was, and having done a bit more research on the internet, it's my bad I didn't research enough. Um, this motor, uh, obviously it's a censored brushless motor and there's some very fine uh, bits of electronics inside the sensor end and water's got on those and it's causing partial shorts which is upsetting the whole sensor mechanism. That's the problem. Um, now I assumed that this can, this uh, Novak ballistic can, was reasonably waterproof. Here's a, a, a rubber seal around where the sensor wire goes in and um, the ESC, and this comes as a combo that I purchased, the ESC is so as a waterproof ESC. So I put two and two together and made the assumption that, okay, waterproof ESC, here's a rubber seal, this must be waterproofed as well. No, it's not. Um, this can is in three sections. This black section here is separate to the bronzy gold section, and then this black section is separate. Each line around here uh, is not o-ring sealed or anything like that so water can get into there uh, these holes here this color in the depth of the hole uh, that's just a kind of a cardboard sort of washer to stop short circuits nothing to do with waterproofing so water can get in all of those holes also through the uh, three silver bolt holes that clamp the whole mechanism the whole case together that none of that's waterproof there on the other end uh, this central um, part here you can actually rotate to adjust the timing 
and where that joins in there there's no sort of water seal provision at all there so in summary uh, this can is um, it's like a colander basically so it needs a lot of work what I'm going to do after doing a bit of research on the internet is to disassemble this completely take out the sensor ring circuit and plaster dip that with a very fine layer of plaster dip and then reassemble that and then I will be plaster dipping around every single join and every single screw hole on the motor. Right, so we've now got the rest of the can. Now the other end will now slide off. And you can see here, um, obviously, everywhere where there's uh, a join between these two parts of the case, water can get in there. So all of that needs to be sealed up all the way around and all the way around where the power wires come in. This bit itself is just a bunch of coils of wires. You know, you could get that wet, that wouldn't be too bad. This is the problem. Um, this is the sensor ring here. You'll never guess what I'm about to do. Yeah, painting on more plaster dip. <laughs> Thought I'd finished. Uh, the good news is that um, I've reassembled the motor with the um, sensor coated in plaster dip and various bits and bobs um, greased up. Obviously the bearings at each end I've greased and um, it's working absolutely fine. So what I've done, I've just put masking tape around the edge of the can and I've left the joints between each piece of metal exposed. So I'm just gonna generously slap plaster dip over all of the joints now and uh, let that dry. So here we are uh, the day after our aborted submersion test. Here's the Novak ballistic motor with its new coat of plaster dip. Um, so the motor is basically this um, sort of brown coppery ring of metal plus two end cans of black metal here. So you've got a joint around there which is now completely plaster dipped and a joint here which again I've plaster dipped as well all the way around. And the other thing that where there was a joint um, was on this end can here on the end bell that you can rotate that to change the timing. That's now completely plaster dipped up. And on the other end, um, which I didn't do last time, I've covered these bolts here, the three bolts that go all the way through the can uh, they're now completely sealed up and um, I've done something extra on where the output shaft comes out because I was concerned about water under pressure maybe getting past the bearing. Uh, the bearing here on the inside of the motor has got marine grease on it and also on the outside I've put marine grease around there and then with my finger I've just rubbed around there and made like a cone of marine grease and then I've put plaster dip all the way around so we've got a very slightly soft dome of plaster dip now what I'm hoping will happen is when that goes underwater we'll get reasonably equal pressure on that area which will hold the marine grease on the bearing and stop any water getting through. I thought before we do a full scale test with the uh, reproofed Novak ballistic motor we better do a small scale test. So uh, here's the motor, everything's plugged in. I'm going to put it in a small tub of water to start with. The motor's uh, working at the moment so let's uh, pop it in the water and see what happens. I'm going to keep fiddling away with this and I'm going to leave it in soak for uh, maybe about five minutes and uh, I'll report back. Well, here we are five minutes later and the uh, motor is still functioning absolutely fine. <coughs> so here we are back in the aquatic facility. Truck's plugged in. And let's get the water in. Right, front tyres nearly under, motors half submerged in water. So I'd say we're now fully submerged, there's water completely over the motor. I'm not sure, I think the truck may be slightly floating. Well, reverse lights are still working.
Let's try some of the other lights. Not so much red lights here. The truck's wheel spinning a lot now, so obviously um, it's nearly buoyant under there. Might need some wheel weight. We'll just wait until the front lipo is completely submerged. Right, there we are, it's uh, 2 minutes 20 seconds so far we've been in the water. Uh, with the water off you can hear it a bit better. There's the truck still working. It's just really struggling because it's, uh, it's not getting much grip, it's nearly floating. There we are. Looks completely waterproof. Steering still absolutely fine. All the LED controllers are working. I've got the main the main roof lights, headlights. Now finally, let's just test out the winch. I'm just gonna pay out some slack here. If I can get hold of the hook. So there's the winch completely submerged at the moment. got a plastic pole here I'm just going to hook around and wedge that across the side of the bath and let's test the winch It's trying to pull itself up. Let's nudge the trucks forwards. It's going very slowly. There we go, the winch is still functioning. There we go, one aquatic test successfully completed. We've now been in the water for five minutes. Obviously the key there is if you've got a brushless motor that's a sensor brushless, you need to do some extra special stuff to waterproof it. I wouldn't recommend this overall, um, it's taken a lot of work. I've, I've noticed that on the, uh, on the speed controller, the little window where there's the lights, there is a little bit of um, moisture showing underneath. Uh, it's not going to be good for your kit long term, but if you want to, you can do it. Here we are, back in the workshop after the submersion test. See the truck's still rather wet. Um, spent about 10 minutes overall completely submerged and uh, everything's still working. And the battery packs didn't explode. That was a relief, I was a bit worried about that. And uh, more importantly, the motor that failed yesterday uh, with the, uh, the sensor harness getting wet, that seems absolutely fine now. We've got... Uh... There we go. Uh, Perhaps a bit of a pointless exercise, you might say, because I'm not going to be putting this in water every day like that. Uh, but I did want to achieve that level of um, <clears throat> protection for the model. Job done. Okay, there we go. Uh, before I move on to the body shell, in wrapping this video up, I just want to say, um, 
be really, really careful if you want to try and do this, folks. Uh, don't just go and chuck your model in the bath and <clears throat> see what happens. It'll probably destroy it and break things. Um, I'm lucky that I got away with my motor still working. Uh, the speed controller itself, uh, the window where the LEDs are shining out there, I have noticed this morning there's some slight condensation inside. So even with a what's sold as a waterproof Timbuktu uh, Novak speed controller that's then had additional plastic dip on it, water is still getting in somewhere slightly. Um, water just gets in everywhere. You've also seen on the video that I highlighted a few moments ago, one of the exposed power connectors was fizzing in the water. Um, water and electrics, yeah, be really careful please. Uh, if you go and try and do this yourself and it goes wrong, yeah, I'm sorry but I'm not going to be responsible. I hope you found the video entertaining and educating. If you're interested in doing this kind of level of waterproofing yourself, there's a, a link to my full waterproofing video up here. There's also lots and lots of very detailed waterproofing videos on the internet. People like uh, Medic and um, Squirrel. I'll put a few links for those down in the description. Questions or comments as usual, pop them below. Thanks for watching.